Thank you. In uh, the right place, pharmaceuticals are amazing chemicals. Uh, saving lives, preventing disease. But when they end up in our environment, they can sometimes create problems. Why is that? Well, in contrast to most other chemicals, pharmaceuticals are biologically active molecules made to go into your body and affect biological processes. And those target molecules the pharmaceuticals bind to in humans, they are quite often present in other species as well. So if pharmaceuticals end up in the environment, they have the potential to affect other species who are in no need of treatment. So do we find any pharmaceuticals in our environment? Yes, hundreds of them. Um, you can actually analyze excreted drugs from our bodies in sewage as an objective measure of our use and abuse of drugs. Also illegal compounds. An Italian team, they analyzed cocaine in the sewage of Milano over the days of the week. And this was the pattern they find. More partying in the weekend, it looks like. The same team also looked at cocaine levels along the River Thames in the UK. Guess where they found the highest levels? Downstream from these familiar houses. Now we all know what they're doing there, right? So, all these different kinds of pharmaceuticals that we find, are they doing any harm? Well, for most of them, I think probably not. But some of them, yes. What you see here is a testicle from a roach, a common European freshwater fish. You see all the developing sperm cells, and in the middle, you see an egg cell. That shouldn't be there. These feminized male fish can sometimes be found downstream from sewage treatment plants. Synthetic estrogen, the female sex hormone, excreted from women taking contraceptives, is thought to be a major cause behind this feminization of fish. A Canadian research team investigated if this hormone also could affect entire ecosystems. So they dosed an entire lake with this hormone from a boat several times a week during several years to a concentration of five nanograms per liter. Per liter. That's just a little bit above what you find in treated sewage effluents. And this little fish, the fathead minnow, used to be very common in this lake. But after three years of dosing, it was almost completely gone. The hormone had worked as a contraceptive for the fish. Sometimes you get surprised how pharmaceuticals enter the environment. These magnificent vultures used to be the most common birds of prey in India and Pakistan. But over the course of a few years, the populations crashed as a result of poisoning with diclofenac, a common painkiller that many of you probably use from time to time. They had been exposed to this drug by feeding on carcasses of cows, cows that had been treated with this drug. But vultures are extremely sensitive to diclofenac. Just one meal of contaminated meat is sufficient to destroy their kidneys. So our use of drugs leads to effects in the environment. But some years ago, we also asked ourselves if also the production of drugs 
could lead to significant pollution. So we went to India, the world's largest manufacturer of active substances for medicines. This treatment plant near Hyderabad receives wastewater from about 90 different pharmaceutical factories. The treated effluent is released into a small river that eventually becomes the Godavari River, which is one of India's holy rivers and also water source for millions of Indians downstream. The effluent turned out to be highly toxic to a range of organisms. For example, when we exposed developing frogs to effluent diluted 500 times, they still grew 40% smaller than the control frogs. Still, it wasn't the toxicity of the effluent that surprised us the most. It was the concentrations of pharmaceuticals that we found there. We found a lot of different pharmaceuticals at very high levels. Some of them at levels a million times higher, almost a million times higher than those we normally detect. For a few, the concentrations in the effluent was higher than the levels you and I have in our blood when we are taking medication. For one of these drugs, ciprofloxacin, a broad-spectrum antibiotic, I estimated that 44 kilos was released from this plant in one day. 44 kilos. Let's put that in some perspective. In Sweden, the entire population use about 9 kilos of ciprofloxacin per day. So this is about five times the usage of an entire country. This pollution has, of course, contaminated the environment. About one gram per kilo of the sediments, river sediments, organic material, is ciprofloxacin. Hadn't it been so inexpensive to produce ciprofloxacin, one could probably mine it from the ground here. The groundwater has also been contaminated. Water wells in surrounding villages contain very high levels of different drugs, including antibiotics. And these poor people living here, they have very few alternative water sources to turn to. Nature wrote about these findings, and they referred to it as India's drug problem. But is it only India's problem? I think it's our problem too. Of at least two different reasons. First, the medicines produced here, they are sold all over the world, also here in Sweden. I think that makes us part of this. I think it implicates a shared moral responsibility to improve the situation. Second, this massive release of antibiotics in the environment risks stimulating the development of antibiotic-resistant bacteria. And you know that resistant bacteria tend to spread all over the world. The World Health Organization lists this accelerating antibiotic resistance development as one of the three largest threats to public health globally. So, to start addressing the uh, risks for antibiotic resistance, we analyzed antibiotic resistance genes in bacteria in this contaminated river sediment. If bacteria have antibiotic resistance genes, we can no longer kill them with antibiotics. Here is Linda taking samples up and downstream from this Indian treatment plant. And here is Carolyn taking samples up and downstream from a regular sewage treatment plant in Sweden. 
This plant only receives household waste and no industrial input. And here are some of the results. This is analysis of one resistance gene that makes bacteria resistant to sulfonamides, a type of antibiotics. And at the Swedish sites, we couldn't detect it. Upstream from the Indian plant, we found a few copies. And downstream, we found a lot. High levels, also 17 kilometers downstream from this treatment plant. We saw similar pattern for other genes. I think all in all, we found two resistance genes in the Swedish samples and 37 in the Indian. So, what challenges are we facing? Certainly, it doesn't look like this everywhere. But we do know now that there are examples of factories releasing effluents with very high levels of drugs, not only in India, but also in China, Korea, Europe, the United States. Still, in none of these regions are there regulations in place that limits how much drugs a factory can flush out. I think authorities have argued that, well, pharmaceuticals, they are so valuable, so of course the companies won't let them out. But obviously they are not that valuable. I hope that authorities in different countries of the world will come up with appropriate regulations in the near future. When you buy medicines, it may say made in Sweden or made in the USA on the label. But that refers to the final product. The active substance in your medicine is very often produced by someone else, somewhere else. But all that is, at least in Europe, confidential information. You and I have no idea, no possibility to choose a medicine that we know have been produced in a fair way. A greater transparency throughout this production chain is on my wish list. Much the, the, the strong price pressure on medicines have moved out much of the production to low salary countries. And there are very few incentives for industries to invest in green production. Personally, I think it should pay off economically in some way for those companies that take responsibility for the environment. You can create incentives in different ways. For example, by including environmental impact to some extent in the pricing or reimbursement systems. Or that pharmacies and hospitals require better pollution control when they buy medicines. Finally, we use medicines all over the world. But the medicines we eat in different countries may all come from the same place. So the more of us that asks for good production standards, the more likely the situation will improve. And when it comes to antibiotic resistance, this is a global challenge. At the end of the day, it matters little if resistance arises in New Delhi, Gothenburg, or New York. As our global travel habits help bacteria move across national borders. So to address all these challenges, I think we need to come together and work together. Thank you very much for your attention.